Welcome to the Miniatures Paintbrush. Today we're gonna talk about Warhammer 40k. Actually, <laughs> I'm doing this in response to a Q&A that's gonna happen later on in the show. Welcome to the Miniatures Paintbrush. Today we're gonna talk about Warhammer 40k Apocalypse. So that's gonna be the theme for the today. All right, so but before we get on to our main topic, let's talk a little bit about Holly Progress. Now, all the Reaper miniatures that I've actually painted, you see them aligned over there, uh, 15 different miniatures, they're all up for sale on eBay. Um, if you're part of the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion, you can just check them out or just check out the seller and see what I have available. They're all up there. Uh, I've been posting it on uh, Facebook. Uh, hopefully I'm not getting too annoying with that. Uh, just know that, you know, whatever you contribute by buying these miniatures will go back into the channel, make it a better channel for you guys for better content. All right. Um, also working on an anti-paladin. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this. This is an anti-paladin. Uh, maybe? I don't know. All right, wearing black armor and it's purple and got some maroon going on in there with the robe. Anti-Paladin who has a frost sword, so I painted it white so far. I'm going to airbrush something like that. I guess it's going to turn out a little bit like uh, this kind of gradient here that I did. I don't know if you can see that. Oh. Uh, I showed him how to do this kind of gradient in my... Um, my painting class that actually happens at your hobby place. Uh, there's actually another one coming up this weekend on the 22nd. We're gonna hold it down because what we're going to do is we're gonna start painting up uh, war bands for Warhammer Underworlds. You know, a game that I'm very passionate about. I really do like Warhammer Underworlds. Uh, so uh, we're gonna paint up some war bands for that from start to finish. So if you wanted to paint up a war band, come out. Come out. We do have the warbands that we're painting up from start to finish. We're all going to be working on the same warband. Um, so, and they're the Far Striders. Uh, and, you know, we're just going to paint it up from start to end. I'll show you the complete process. Of course, it's always for free because I enjoy giving back to the community. All right. Uh, that is your hobby place in West Virginia. So why don't you do a Google search on that and check us out on, uh, on actually on Facebook as well. Your hobby place is also West Virginia. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> more, well, let's talk a little bit about, oh, it'd be remiss to mention that back for, uh, well, a while ago, I don't even know what it was, uh, September, October, November, I don't know. Um, we had a 50th anniversary of Badger Airbrush. And you know, I use Badger Airbrushes. Here's a, my Renegade Chrome that I have here. And this has been my workhorse. I used to have an Iowata Neo, but I didn't care for that. Uh, Iowata CSs are really nice too. I might invest one day and pick one of those up. Um, and also there, there's other ones with smaller needle sizes. But this is, this is my workhorse. This is definitely a hot rod. Um, I find it very, very useful until it kind of broke and then I had to ship back. Now, if you didn't know, Badger Airbrushes, if, if this breaks, you can send it back to them and all you're doing is paying like the shipping and handling and I think it's parts now. Um, but for the work or stuff like that, it's absolutely free. So they fixed this for me. Uh, the bottom piece here just came straight off. Uh, they fixed it for me for free but just for the shipping and handling, which is pretty cool. The only thing it took, took like almost three months uh, in order for it to get back to me. So I said, okay, so if that ever happened again, I'm gonna need a backup airbrush. And I didn't know what I was gonna get. I was really leaning towards the Iowata CS. I was getting my hopes up for the Iowata CS, really getting into that and finding out. I was looking at hardware in Steinbeck as well, looking at the Infinity Chrome line and then looking into that and stuff like that. But Badger Airbrush had a 50th anniversary. So what I picked up was this Sotar 2020. Um, definitely used for detail. Wonder how nicely detailed I can actually get it. Um, and I like this feature, it's a little different than mine because you could just uh, loosen up the chuck from here uh, and you could actually pull out the needle if you want to. They're, they're right back there. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put it back here. But, but yeah, this, 50 bucks. You know, you couldn't get better for a really high-end uh, airbrush than that. The travel is really almost the same as the travel that is on 
uh, the Renegade Chrome, so I'm very familiar with that travel. Uh, the cup is a lot smaller, but I don't, I don't usually fill this up all the way. Um, only when priming and stuff like that do I fill it, uh, and I'm priming many models, or doing a car where I'm just constantly going back and forth. This is my go-to, but if I'm doing details, or just putting stock details, or highlighting and stuff like that, this will definitely come in handy. Although, this is my backup brush, so if that anything happens to my Chrome, then I'll start using the Sotar. I, I, do, I might test it out and do a comparison video of the Chrome with the Sotar and see which one is better, but that's some things like that are pretty much better used when I have my computer gaming, my computer set up so this way I can um, actually do some video editing with this stuff and you know really make it look nice. really want to show off what I can do with video editing when the computer comes in uh, while well, the pieces are coming in. All right, so enough about hobby progress, time for computer hobby progress. First things first, AMD is killing Intel's butt. Like, really bad. If you don't know the processors markets thing, AMD is the way to go. Like, really. Uh, they just came out with a thread ripper that's 64 threads. 64 cores. 64 cores. That's insane. Mine is insane. It's 16 cores. Insane, right? Hey, uh, usually, if you want to play high definition games, uh, sort of like, you know, um, what is it? Uh, a COD or something like that, and you want a high frame rate FPS, 60 plus frame rate F FPS, A core is fine. I mean, you know, really fine to play 4K games. You can't really get much more than A core. Mine is double that because I'm insane. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but Threadripper, oh my goodness, not even just the Threadripper, the Ryzen series is just really dominating uh, all the processors out there from Intel, in my opinion. Uh, you know, prove that I'm wrong down in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. All right, so getting into, like, I'm really getting into this, like, nerdy aspect of, uh, aspect of building computers. I think it's really fascinating. Uh, I used to do it in the 90s. That was something I did. I was like, oh my gosh, you have the floppy disk so we can load in the BIOS and all. Now it all comes in, and I hear it's a lot easier to do. So let me tell you what I got for the computer. Because every time, every week, I, I show you a new thing that I buy for the computer. Slowly but surely, it's all coming together. Um, one thing I cannot show you is a computer desk. Now, I was uh, selling some old items that I had, some end tables and stuff like that, um, at this place called Finders Keepers uh, in Hagerstown, Maryland. And yeah, check them out. They're really cool. And... Um, well, I was saying, okay, so if I'm going to get a computer desk, I want something with personality. Like, I, I want something, I just don't want to get those composite wood that feels fake, you know, Ikea stuff. And there's nothing wrong with Ikea. I do have Ikea furniture. It's just like, it's not solid wood for the most part. It's composite wood and, you know, this, eh. You know, of course, you pay more for real wood uh, objects. But if you go to places like you know, consignment shops, like uh, Finders Keepers, for example, you can really find some gems. And you could always talk about the price. So what I did was, is I got this $350 computer desk with three drawers and it's all wood, made dark wood, a really, really awesome thing. And I picked it up for $120. <laughs> it's going to fit everything. Wait, I'll do that one time. Because <laughs> I have to. That just that sounds funny. All right. So um, I'm going to go and show you what I got here though, that I bought uh, for the computer. Okay, so, whoa, this thing is heavy, okay? All right, so what I got, this is the back. What I got was the Z623 uh, Logitech THX, that's movie type quality, certified by THX, um, and it has 400 watts of power. It's 200 RMS. So that's pretty powerful stuff with a subwoofer from Logitech. I, I love Logitech, not that they're sponsored. I mean, you want to sponsor me, Logitech? Yeah, you can do that. Um, I like Logitech's uh, their peripherals for my computer. I think they're very high quality. They've been in the game for a very, very long time, and I trust them, okay? Almost exclusively. Well, almost definitely exclusively for my build, but um, yeah, this thing is heavy. Is that subwoofer? <laughs> Oh, okay, 400 watts of power. So if I ever wanted to pump a party down here, 
easily done. <laughs> well, that is it for computer hobby progress. Um, so, I do wanted to go up to this section, and I missed one before. Hey, this one, this new section in my um, my videos, it's talking head videos, is going to be called hmm, question of the day. All right, question of the week, maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Question of the day, question of the week. Probably I'm once a week, so it's question of the week. All right, here's the question of the week segment. Question of the week, week, week. I have to do an animation and stuff like that once I get my computer. All right, so. Beer 40 k asks, are you happier with your new toned down uh, intro and do you miss the old style? What do you mean? Toned down? Honestly, I don't really see too much of a difference between my old ones and the other ones. The only thing that I saw that was really, really different where I was like, welcome to the Rangers Papers. Well, I guess that's pretty amped up exciting, right? I got amped up for that. Um, but the voice, the volume, it was spiking. And while it's spiking, it was uh, eroding the volume quality for people. Plus, yelling in people's ears when you have your headphones is kind of not cool, you know? I don't want to really yell in people's ears. Uh, <laughs> I am equally excited. The only thing is I'm not yelling, you know? It's like, welcome to the Mrs. Papers. Today, we're going to talk about... So, see, it was that kind of intro. Uh, a little bit more toned down. Uh, but, you know, I kind of do like it because I think I was a little more childish with the other one. But I guess playful. I don't know. I I kind of thought I needed the show to grow up just a little bit. And uh, that little toned down intro helped with the volume levels, keeping it kind of the tonality throughout the entire video about the same. And, you know, you know, adjust the gain and make sure that everything is, is good and not peaking one way or the other too much, really hurting your ears when you're listening to me. Um, so I kind of like that, uh, that I didn't have those peaks. And I had the added benefit of having a little bit more mature, uh, matureness to my uh, videos. Now, I'm, I'm mid-40s, so <laughs> I want to sound like an adult every now and again. And even though I'm playing with, I guess, essentially toys, um, I kind of enjoy it. This is what I do, you know? Do what I do and make me happy, right? This is my spare time. This is what I do with my spare time. You don't like it? Tough for you. I've always been original. Like I was always a, a person that was not afraid to be who I am as a person. So um, yeah. So mainly, what I didn't want to do is yell in people's ear and have that volume spike. But I think I, I'm pretty energetic. In fact, sometimes I sweat when I do this and I talk really fast. People's like people are telling me like slow down, slow down. It's a bit too much, right? All right. So. <laughs> Next question he asks, uh, Idik Beer 40K. And if you're not subscribed to his channel, check out his channel, Idik Beer 40K, to keep up with the wonders of Warhammer 40K. All right. Um, the next question is What was the first mini you ever painted? The one that I threw in the fire and melted. Oh boy. Um, it was actually the first one I fell in love with uh, when I was in that gaming store, um, The Complete Strategist in Manhattan. In it, it, The game is store is actually in the Empire State Building. <laughs> so it's on the bottom, right? It's a pretty, pretty depth, in depth store. Um, and the Golden Demon winner won an award for this model here. It's from Privateer Press, so it's not from Games Workshop. Um, it's the Protectorate of Menoth Faction, and it was the Harbinger of Menoth. It was just this girl flowing up, there's change holding her down, and she's crossed, and she was painted all in white. I thought it would be so cool that the first mini that I ever painted was all white. It was all white to me. Well, for people who don't know what I'm talking about here, white is one of the most difficult colors to paint. It is tricky, 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 tricky. So there's white, there's yellow, and there's red that seem to be really, really annoying uh, to work with. This is uh, to do with the molecules of the actual paint itself, the pigment paint itself, and how it reflects light and the way you do it, because they're naturally all transparent. Um, so, you know, <laughs> 
it'll just let the bottom layers kind of sink in. So the only way to combat that is to do some zenithal kind of highlighting and then building that up or building up layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of darker to lighter coats till you finally get to white. Or don't paint white at all and paint like a really light gray. And that seems like white. But there are these all these different tricks that you can use that I had no idea. In the 90s, there wasn't a YouTube. There wasn't something I could just look up and find out how to paint this stuff. No, there was me, non thin down paint self. I don't even know if I put primer on the sucker. And no, or if if I did put primer on the sucker, it was ooh, spray can primer. That's right. It was spray can primer. I primed it black. And I was using a pill bottle, because even since the 90s, I was using pill bottles with double-sided tape to put the mini on. And I, I sprayed it so close. A spray can, a rattle can, right? I sprayed it like really close. So you know it pooled up everywhere and completely like obliterated details and stuff like that, right? So the chains were globby and all kind of stuff. It was almost like Nurgle touched it, right? And then I painted white on it, which it never turned white. Like it, it was always gray or darker, like lighter black. I don't know if that's okay. Gray, right? So it's gray and patchy and nasty and, and just totally done. And, and I was trying to paint like, you know, uh, burgundy on the cross that she had on the chest. She's coming up and I said, really cool model. I mean, really cool model. I have been stigmatized. One of these days, I'm gonna buy that model again. I'm gonna try it again with the abilities that I know have now and see what kind of thing I can create. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I just look at the model and it's like intimidating to me. Weird, huh? Right? I don't know. It's because I had such a bad experience with it. I was like, you know what? I'm done with you. I'm done with you, Minnie. I can't take you anymore. It's hideous. I used to show people and people go, eh, right? <laughs> I looked at it and went, eh. Everybody was like, eh. This is kind of face it looked like. I was like, this. It was like crazy, crazy, crazy. The protector of the Menoth said, nope. Nope. Right. So anyway, I took it and I chucked it into the fire and I watched the sucker melt and was actually happy to see that sucker go. All right. So that was it. The Protectorate of Menoth, the Harbinger of Menoth. Uh, do a Google search so you can check it out. Really cool model that I never really completed. I did, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> that was my first ever model. Okay, that sums it up for the question of the week, 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 week. Animation here. All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> now on to the main topic, sort of the main event of this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Warhammer 40K Apocalypse. That's right. So Warhammer 40k Apocalypse. So what do you get to do in that? Uh, you get to feel basically your entire army. Bring as many you know uh, detachments as you want to bring. Uh, so it's going to be huge, huge. All right. Uh, you, you have the opportunity to fill your entire army, um, but realize that it's a game in its own right. It's sort of like. Um, Kill Team is a game in its own right, although it used the 40K models, and some of the rules are, are very similar to 40K, so if you play 40K, it'll be very similar. Uh, but in Apocalypse, same thing. So similar to 40K, but you know, uh, it's its own game, so it has its own rule sets. Okay, so uh, it's supposed to have an innovative uh, rule system. It's built on the 40k system. It's supposed to be a quicker way to play the game, uh, an alternative way to play the game. Uh, and damage happens at the end of your turn, at the end of your turn. So this is great for me because I get shot off the board before I even get to use my models. At this point, I can, you can shoot at me and you totally killed me. Like at the end of the turn, I am gone and toast. But I'm not done until I get a turn to shoot back at you. So I'm doing some damage too. And I do like that aspect of the game. So ha ha, for those people who want to write people off the table, you got to get some damage done. All right. 
So it enables you units to shoot and attack back before they get obliterated. So I really do like that. Um, they have command asset cards, and it's gonna have a lot, a lot of different flavor to it. So you have Nurgle's Rot for the you know uh, Death Guard. Um, you're gonna have like all these kind of features out for the orcs. You're gonna you know create a Wa and all this other stuff. So it adds that flavor of the actual faction into the game. So it's not all like you're playing vanilla all the time. All right. But and there's 300, 300 of these uh, asset cards in the box, and I believe there's another box that has a hundred more. But the, of course, and that's sold separately. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha, you, Games Workshop. All right. <laughs> so this is what I love. So you have detachments, which are the same. Uh, detachments are treated the same way as. Um, Units are in 40k. So this is a game of detachments where 40k is a game of units and Kill Team is a game of just singular models. So this just all has to do with detachments. Makes it really, really like it's pretty innovative that they do all of those steps and process. So if you want to play a game at any level, you can just choose that and have fun, roll dice and get together with some friends. Um, and not in that order. All right, so you do have the data sheets for the apocalypse, but they are free to download. So check that out. All the data sheets are free. Now, movement trays. We're getting back to movement trays. There you go. Uh, so you can move units at a time. They have trays of 25, 32, and 44 mil uh, trays in order to put your models in. So it's you know just easier for you to move around. That's really great. Now. Let's talk about what I'm really excited about because I don't know if I'm going to play uh, Apocalypse as much. I, mean, I don't know if I'm, the hype train is there, but I don't know if I'm really, really going to get into it or not. Um, but I am into the models, you know, of painting. So, yeah. Okay, so we they have the Orc Spearhead Detachment. Here's one that I'm interested in. The Imperial Knights Super Heavy Detachment. Here they have those huge knights, and then you have the two smaller knights, and I have the middle knight. I don't know, it's best. There goes my technical ability on explaining this. <laughs> only professionals here, only professionals, right? So it has the, the, the largest Imperial Knight, or one of the largest Imperial Knights. Well, no, no, that's the Warhound, War Titan. We're not talking about those. So it's the Night Titan, the one above that, right? So it has one of those, and then the two little guys, the Warglaves, I think they're called. I don't know. All right. Really interesting, because I already have one of the Night Titans, then I like, complete the collection, kind of, of having all the range right there, except for, of course, the Warhound and the larger ones. Um, that's intense. Okay, so... Um, they have the Astro Militarium, which has a lot of Lehman Rust tanks, and I like Lehman Rust tanks. I'm not enough to buy them because then I would have gotten the Bata uh, Battle Force box. And I think like the uh, Apocalypse boxes are sort of the, I guess the battle, um, the battle boxes of the winter. But this is the summer version of them, right? So it's, as far as release dates. GW likes to bi do big releases, and one of these big releases would be the Battle Force boxes, and it happens usually around Christmas time. But they usually have a lot of different releases in the summertime. The first one is going to be these battalion box sets. Um, then they have the Tau Empire Vanguard. Now, I'm sort of interested in this, although I think I have all the models that are in there anyway. So I might have another unit of everything, which, you know, I hear is not bad. It's not bad, but um, I can have different configurations, you know, because I don't like magnetizing. Nope, yep, not for me. All right. I'll do it, but yeah. Uh, all right. They have the Adeptus Mechanicus Vanguard. So um, uh, Wolf Brother Mythos, you and your um, Adeptus Mechanicus can rock on with that. The Chaos Space Marine Battalion, which is 32 models, is pretty good. Uh, what's in there? Uh, quite a bit. They have the uh, Space Marine Battle uh, ba Battalion Detachment uh, as well with 32 figures. Um, and I have all of those and I have, I don't, I don't, I don't need anymore. <laughs> no need anymore. Um, they have the Tyranid Spearhead Detachment. If you're into that uh, Aliens v Predator kind of like vibe, 
Yeah, there are a lot of big guys in that one. Uh, of course, the Necrons Outrider Detachment, uh, pretty cool. And the Craft World's Vanguard Detachment. A lot of Banshees, I think, that are in there. Or Wraith Knights. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know about this stuff uh, too much. I only know about what I do play with and what I paint, uh, which of course are my Space Wolves. Um, I do know about Tau. I, I do know about Death Guard. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proficient with those things right there. Um, but, you know, learning them all is kind of difficult, but I'm sort of new into the hobby. I would think I'm two years into this hobby right now. This is only my like second year or, or third. I don't know, going on to three? <laughs> Anywho, something to really be excited about. Be on the watch out for your uh, Apocalypse game. So if you ever have, if you do have a large collection and you want to play your your friends, it's worth picking up. Uh, it really, definitely is. Uh, and you know, if you're a completionist, you have the kill team stuff and you have the 40k stuff. Of course, you're gonna have to have the Apocalypse battle stuff as well. Uh, so there's that. All right, well, this is gonna be a pretty short video. I think it's short, I'm not sure. <laughs> and if you like this video, and before I even go into the outro, I do have to tell you, if you have a question for the question of the week, put it down below, and every week I think maybe I'll answer a question. That would be kind of cool. So if you have any questions, please list it down below. Also, what do you think about Warhammer 40K Apocalypse? Are you going for it? Are you not going for it? Um, I didn't talk anything about contrast paints or anything like that, only because, well, they're glazes. I mean, I, I'll, I'll try them out. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna try them out this weekend, possibly after my class. I think it would be kind of cool to see what one of them do and how they airbrush and the qualities of them. And essentially, if there's a lot of like glazing and stuff like that that I can do, Maybe I'll pick it up, but for larger surfaces, I would definitely use an airbrush in the traditional style of painting while glazing little areas, which you can't really reach with an airbrush and kind of hard to get into the crooks and crevices of it. So when it comes to contrast paints, kind of use them in conjunction with your paints. Although I'd be more excited in picking up a, a Scale 75 Fantasy in game set. The entire paint set would be nice. Uh, and the... Um, Scale 75 set as well uh, for painting. And I'll be more excited with that. Although I do have the, uh, I do have all the war color paints, which are very similar to all jail base mediums and the airbrush like a dream. All right, so now let's get into the intro. If you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.